Chapter 34, Flora. Somewhere on planet Earth was a city encased in an anomaly, encased in a dome, with cars stretching out from it into the horizon. After several decades of deteriorating weather phenomena, it faced a grave climate risk that would raise it to the ground. In its 11th hour, the city was forced to evacuate, creating a gridlock that snaked away into the neighboring world. Instead of the calamity, an anomaly saved them. And in that pregnant chaos, it gave birth to a monument, the city's generational gridlock. It wasn't long before visionaries such as Stam Emmer bought cars in the gridlock and ossified its existence. Some say he was a savior, providing reprieve at his own cost to citizens that wanted to return. Some say he was a greedy man that took advantage of vulnerable people to create and corner a market. Needless to say, its formalization into a commons market gave the city the funds it needed to survive. Decades on, it thrives. The city and its inhabitants were safer under its dome, supporting hope runners every five years and building new monuments from its centers. What was once considered dead or inanimate became alive, concrete growing like fungi over the cars and the streets. Despite its ultimate purpose, to leave in case they needed to, the city became a home for many. In it, they dream, from the penthouses, the affluent, high above, dreaming of flying away, all the way down to the orphans protecting caves that descended from the trunks of cars that no longer drove. In this city, every emotion was alive. Some hoped for answers. Some hoped for a better life. Some hoped to ease their tensions in the caves. Some just wanted to help. Some were grieving, some were drunk, some were deep into its code, its cryptography unfurling across its grid. Some wished to paint, some wished to be free from their own shackles. Some wished to kiss the girl. Some wished to trade a car on the public car markets. Some wished the city's random numbers would fall in their favor. In a corner, high in a penthouse's apartment overlooking the dome city was a father hunched over a cup of coffee, elated that his son was home again. The mother, the keeper of secrets, hoped that it wouldn't all unravel. In another corner, deep underneath the city, was a man in a white suit and a tire earring in his right ear, speaking to another group of men. He had fought for these men when they were boys. There was a pulsating energy emanating from the halls, white mechs marching in lockstep. In another corner, a woman with her lover's locket around her neck held the hand of her daughter as she crouched and explained a mechanized suit in front of her. The girl reached out and touched it. Her daughter cried. The woman grieved as well, for not just the life of her lover that died, but for all of life. In another corner, a woman was painting in her new apartment. The brush strokes were wild, purposefully going over the lines the mistakes turning into imperfect art. In another corner, in a cavern with plenty of vegetation and LED screens, a man was cleaning his shoulder pads with his new dog barking at him. It had peed on the floor of the cave. In another corner, a man was studying for his college degree. The library was cold. He left to try on a new suit in preparation for the final trial of a championship built to send out a runner for hope. In another corner, Deep underneath concrete straddling two skyscrapers, in a market with many alleyways, sat a man and a boy, both in white suits. They were eating tacos and laughing. The city was alive, and its hope was running through its gridlock, all the way straight to a bus in a forgotten corner of the city where a mother was looking through some old memorabilia. Flora sat down at the table after her final training session with Argent, Warm, home-cooked food awaited her. Smells of roasted chicken, rice, and vegetables. She started digging in when her mother walked into the bus from her taxi. This is so good, Mom, Flora said, enjoying the meal. It wasn't anything fancy, but that's what made it so meaningful. Her mother made it. As her food settled, she noticed that there were strings and sewing needles around. Mom, what is this? She asked, pointing to it. It's nothing she said with a sly smile. Her mother was obviously making her something, perhaps a gift. Flora replied with a sneaky look at her mother. I'll have to wait after the trial? Madeira nodded and smiled. It was suddenly overwhelming. 
and the reality of what could soon happen finally dawned on Flora. She could leave all this behind. With her newfound sense of acceptance, she smiled through her tears. Somewhere on planet Earth was a city encased in a dome. The sun set over a long line of cars falling into the horizon. There was a buzz about it, akin to the vibrations of a thousand cars idling. The final trial of the extraordinary Hope Runner Championship was upon them.